I just took off the lid and just kind of burped. <laughs> Welcome back to Craving Food Adventures. I'm Karen Ahmed, and I'm so excited today because I have my friend Michelle in the Cravings Kitchen through Zoom, and she's going to show us how to make a sourdough starter. Now, Michelle is a media registered dietitian, and she's a cultural cuisine content creator. She brings her expertise to her regular TV appearances on the national Canadian show, CTV, The Social, Breakfast Television, Toronto and CP24. That's a lot and a huge resume. Now, let me tell you something about my friend Michelle. We met, we're both members of the Food Bloggers of Canada, and we met on a farm trip. We went to pick apples, and um, that's where I first met Michelle. But we became Facebook friends, and later on, I discovered how big Michelle's heart is. And uh, she uh, reached out to me and she said, hey, your son's going to Mac. I live very close in the area and I would be happy to feed him anytime. Just tell him to get in touch with me and I'll provide him any meals that he wants. And I thought that was so amazing. Thank you so much, Michelle, for your very, very big heart. And thank you for being on Cravings. And Michelle is going to show us how to make a sourdough starter. Now, all of us want to learn how to make bread, especially at this time when we're all in lockdown and there's no yeast available. And Michelle is going to show us how to do it. Over to you, darling. Thank you, Karen. That was really nice of you to say. And you know, your, your kid is welcome here anytime if he wants to hang out with me. <laughs> You're cool, Michelle. You're cool. <laughs> I'm cool. Okay. Well. I'll talk about I'll talk about that with my husband. We'll see see what he says. Cool. So I'd be like, yeah, that was cool. I was so it was cool. Okay, so yeah, sourdough starter. It's actually something that's quite easy. A lot of people are really intimidated by it, but it's not actually that difficult. And so a lot of people can't find yeast uh, in the store right now, or they just want to try making it like the, the really old school traditional way. And there is something really different about it because it really has that nice sour taste that you get, and you're just like, oh wow, that's really good. And you know, the more you do it, the more you, you know you get better at it. Um, but sourdough starter is quite easy to do, and um, I've had people tell me they've tried my sourdough starter recipe, and they're so proud of their creation. So, so I'm going to show you how to make my sourdough starter, and it's actually super, super easy. So let me show you that. This is what you need. You really don't need that many ingredients. So what I have here is first off, I need a clean container, and you want it to be nice and clean. You know, just making sure, because you're going to be growing something in it. And plastic is fine, I'm presuming. You don't need glass. Plastic is fine. We did it very well in the plastic one. You can also use glass, um, but this was good enough. This is what we used. And then here is, or this is what I used. And then here is some flour. I only have a quarter cup of flour in here. So I measured that out and put it on the side. Is this regular all-purpose flour? Yes, it is. You can also use different types of flowers, but it's actually recommended you use the all-purpose flour because it's the least finicky, they say. Like there's, it's just a little easier if you do all-purpose flour. So just go with that. It's also the easiest flour usually to find most of the time. So I would just stick with all-purpose. And then I also have here a quarter cup of water. So a quarter cup of each. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my flour into my pot, I mean my, my container right in there. And then I'm gonna add my water. So it's like equal parts, right? It's pretty, e it's pretty easy to do. Now, in order to get the yeast going, I'm going to stir it vigorously like that until it's nicely combined. <laughs> so I find like, you know, it's people are usually pretty intimidated by this. And you can also do it with different amounts, but I found a quarter cup worked fine when I tried it myself. So I'm just gonna keep going until it's really nice and incorporated. While you're doing that, can I ask, um, can you make this sourdough starter with other types of flour, like non-gluten flours? Yes, yes you can. Oh. You might get a slightly different result, but no, you can definitely try it. That's actually something that I wanna try. Like I really wanna try doing it with like different flours and see what happens. Um, let's, I stirred it very vigorously to get it to come to get it combined with a spatula and then put that on the side and then what you want to do is you are either going to use a cheesecloth or this is a, a washcloth you want one that's lint free and then what you're going to do is you want to cover it 
And the reason why you do this is you want some air to get in it so that, you know, there's, it's still, so we're not putting on the lid back on. We want some air to get in it. And most people have dish towels. And I'm just gonna use a rubber band to kind of secure it. So it looks kind of weird like this, but that's how it looks. So it's like, oh, <laughs> green layer. I that's our Halloween pet. <laughs> yeah, it actually looks like a little ghost or something. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so now you're going to put it in a place that's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So like I put it on top of the fridge, right? You want to put it kind of in a warm-ish spot. And some people ask me, can I put it in the oven? And I'm like, mm. you don't want to turn it on. First of all, it's plastic, so you probably should put that in the oven. Um, but just try and put it someplace where the temperature is pretty consistent. I go about 70 degrees Fahrenheit and I usually put it like on the top of the fridge or somewhere on the countertop. So. Put it aside and it's gonna go away. And then the next day, what you wanna look for is you wanna look for some, the next thing you wanna look for some bubbles, right? And there might be a little bit of bubbling in it. So, and that kind of shows you that the yeast is sort of active. You wanna make sure that you, you check to see if there is any bubbles. And if there's no bubbles, then you might have to wait a little longer. But usually if there's a little bit of bubbles by day two, that means it's, get, it's ready to start feeding in a bit. Mm -hmm. So what you would do is, like the next day, if there's some bubbly, you would remove the top. And then what you wanna do is check for bubbling, okay, and if there's some bubbling, you would feed it some more. You would add a little bit of sourdough, a little bit of flour in there, pour it in there and then you would stir it up. And then I would add a little bit of water again. Now again, you wanna do about a quarter cup of each and put it in there and then stir it again, you know, cause you want, in a way you're kind of like feeding the yeast. So then after that, you would cover it up again, put your rubber band on top and put it back in your warm place. The next three days to maybe seven days, you're going to repeat that process every day. So wow. feed it for about, feed it about a quarter cup flour and a quarter cup water, mix it and then put it back. Now, one thing you might start to notice is people will say, it starts to smell really bad. And it does, but it's part of the process. So it's okay. Like it smells, some people say it smells like dirty gym socks, Karen. Ew. And they're like. And, and I know what those smell like because I have two grown up boys. <laughs> so it say it starts to smell bad and people are like, I ruined it. I could throw it away. And it's like, no, 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 no. Keep going. Keep going. Cause it's like, it, that smell will change over time. It start, might start to smell a little bit sour as well, which is also a sign that something's happening. But people, that's where people usually stop where they get panicked. Cause they're like, I ruined it. It's dead. It's like, no, no, no. Keep, keep the process going. And then by like, maybe later on, maybe by day six and day seven, you'll start to notice something else. I'm going to show you one that I have that has been, I've had for a little while. So this here is one that I have, I have, and as you can see, there's some lactic acid buildup. Wow. And there's some, it's kind of puffed up here. I don't know if you can tell. It's because it's, it's got a bit of gas. It looks so gross. <laughs> <laughs> it does look pretty gross, um, but it starts to smell better. So, I just took off the lid and it kind of burped. It made this little burping sound. It's all that lactic acid. This is like a kind of a science experiment thing. And so what you, this is how it's got some of the acid on the top. And if I smell it, it has a bit of a sour, sour-ish smell. But if I were to go like, sometimes if you pop the bottom like, like this a little bit, you can see some bubble action, some bubbling. Bubbling in there. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. And then that shows that it's, it's like alive, which is kind of cool. So, so you said this one is yours after seven days? Yeah. Wow. This one actually, if you really want to know, three weeks. Wow. And some people have their sourdough starter for years. So uh, after you feed it for seven days, you can yeah. just keep this thing indefinitely? Do you have to continue to do something to it, to keep it alive? Yes. So, I mean, what she would do to keep it alive is you would feed it. So I would add some flour to it. I would feed it, but only once a week. So I would add flour to it again, about a quarter cup. You can you can gauge how much, how much, uh, how much, how, depending on how big it is, how much you want. But I do about a quarter cup, and I'd add about a quarter cup of water. Right now I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring it, but uh, you'll get to know your starter. 
and then I'm just going to stir it again. And what will happen is that it will start to get larger and larger. And that's a sign that the, it's, it's growing. Now, to keep it alive, you would keep it in your fridge after like seven or eight days. And then you would feed it maybe once a week. So once a week, the same thing, quarter cup water, quarter cup flour, and then you would have to put the lid, you actually put the lid on it. And then you would put it back into the fridge. And then what will happen is that you'll see it starting to grow. Like you'll start to get higher and higher on the side. You'll see it growing and getting bigger. And you can either give some of that to a friend and give it to them, or you can throw it away. Now I have no one to give it to because I don't have any friends. So, um, I, <laughs> so I like throw away like half of it um, and then I, I would just keep adding more to it. So you can give it away to somebody or toss it. Now what's very important though with this is this is a, it's a technically a mold, right? It's like a yeast. So when you throw it away, you want to be more careful because you don't want like moldy yeast growth on certain areas like you don't want it on your countertops um you also don't want it like on the sides of your garbage because it's going to keep growing because you don't yeah. want to throw it in your drain so people are like oh if i throw it i just throw it in the drain i'm like no 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 no, don't do that so you might get yeast mold growth in the drain and you don't want that either so if you're going to dispose of it and you throw away about half of it like maybe once a week as it grows then you want to make sure that uh, you dispose of it properly and wash your hands well and wash this all the This is a, a really good point because I don't know if everybody knows this because right now everybody's making sourdough and sourdough starters and this could be a potential problem if they don't know how to, you know, get rid of it properly. Yeah, that, it's definitely one of those food safety things. Like even like this stuff I'm going to wash, it, there's nothing really grown on it yet, but I will definitely wash this as well. Um, and I just try to make sure. And also the thing too that's also gross if you have yeast growth in your Thin or whatever it starts to smell and you don't want that either so and that's a sign that it's like growing or and it's growing in there mixing with all the other stuff in your garbage and so you don't really want that so yeah so then you keep that you would keep that into in your fridge and then people have theirs for years so they just eat it once a week and put it back in the fridge and people will have them forever after you are done like your, your sourdough is ready to go you can in a way use it like you would use regular yeast except regular except it's a little bit slower to get the bread to rise like normal yeast because it's not the commercial one right so it's a good point um to for people to know but i also want to show you we actually have uh i have a bread that i've been making myself i started it yesterday this one right here you can see this is a bread that was started yesterday using our sourdough starter so this guy and it's almost like a wow. pet. A good point to know about. It's a pet. It is. It's literally live. Better like, than a chia pet. Yeah. And people are like, "Can you?" People are like, "Can you?" Um, can I freeze it? And I said, "Well, you wouldn't put a plant in the freezer." Right. <laughs> right. Right. And they're like, and just like when you, when it comes to giving bits of it away, you it's almost like giving away a piece of your tomato plant. You know, when you cut the root and you put it and you put it in like water and then you right. give it. Some, it's kind of the same deal. You put it in a little container for them. So it's just it's a good fun fun point to know. So this is the bread. So I use this sourdough starter for this bread. So this is about you know maybe about this is a mix of I'm gonna take a look the saran wrap to show you. It is a mix of maybe about half whole wheat, half white flour. Wow, it looks good. Um, yeah, and it's just really bubbled up and it's gotten a lot bigger. Um, and I use that, I use my sourdough starter as a part of it, um, stirred it. I use a KitchenAid scan mixer, which is in a way kind of cheating because you're supposed to do it with your hands. Um, but, but it's an easier way to get it done because it can take you forever. And it was actually half this size before and it's really like grown and it smells quite nice. It smells like, I don't know, like like doughy, like the stuff you, you um, before you bake bread, it's like got that nice kind of baking yeah. smell. have a recipe for uh, sourdough that I will put on my video. I also have um, a link on my Instagram that shows you, breaks down the steps of how to make a sourdough starter. So I hope that your viewers find that helpful for themselves. It's something they want to do. 
I'm sure. And also, Michelle has an incredible YouTube channel, and there's lots of things that are very healthy. Like I have a lot of videos, but I I can tell you my videos are not always very healthy. But if you're looking for things that have great nutrition value, Michelle Jalen is definitely the place to go to. I'll make sure to have your YouTube link up and your Instagram, and everyone can follow you. And they should because you're a wonderful person with a big, big heart. Really nice. And you make great food. Thank you. I think you'll make awesome food. I love watching your videos. I'm like, I'm gonna try that recipe. Like, <laughs> it just looks so fun and yummy and like flavorful. And I'm just like, oh, I want to try that. So. Well, you I know what? I'll tell you. When this whole thing is done and we're able to drive up to Hamilton. Um, I'll make sure to connect with you, and uh, we'll do some like food exchange. We're gonna do like a nice Hamilton food tour because there's a lot of really. Oh good yes, let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. A lot of local biz. So, anyways, oh. yes. Well, thank you again, Michelle. It was amazing having you on my channel. Thank you so much, guys, for watching Craving Food Adventures. Like I mentioned, follow Michelle. She's amazing. Until we see you next time, take care.